This is 99% craps. Hard stand, hard stand. There's the number. I'll take the full odds in the 10, 200 on the hard way. The limit on all the numbers, 250 on the 11. Thank you very much. Say, you played this game before. Just once. Welcome to the Red Eye Gamblers podcast. High above the second largest city, west of the Mississippi. Two chronic craps players, talking craps, playing craps, thinking craps. This is 99% Craps. Coming up on our 14th episode of 99% Craps, we start with our trip goals and game day strategies review some of our favorite casino cities, discuss casino routines and betting strategies, give a blistering take on the five count, talk some all tall small bonus strategy, and close with our post-trip report. Wednesday, May 8th, 2019, episode 14, the Red Eye Gamblers present 99% Cracks. So we're back on our trip to Lake Charles on a Sunday. Welcome back, everybody. I think we were just starting to talk about what we were going to do this time. Well, I think you said you wanted to discuss how when we walk up to an empty table, how that builds around us, basically. Yeah. Yeah, well, so that's that's the idea is get there when the table opens up and be some of the first people at that table so we get our positions and then we can start the process of building positive table karma or positive table energy. Yeah, I definitely believe it's much easier to build that karma if we're you, the start, you know, like if we go to a table that's already got five or six people, then we're having to... Um, adapt to their karma that's already at the table right where if we're the first two at the table and we start building it that way i think the karma gets built quicker or more the way we like it i don't know if that even makes sense but well just our happen to have our influence on it maybe i don't know we're still i don't know this is still theory (laughs) but uh but yeah no i think that's that's what we're trying to do and then, yeah, so hopefully the uh, dealers are in good moods. Hopefully they're not hungover. Or, you know, it's, it's everything starts to matter. You know, you got to put all the pieces together. Today, I think I, uh, you know, it's been a little while since we've been. It's been, what, a month again? Yeah. Um, Can you take that down to five now? So I think... Thank you. um, You know, very... You know, and once again, I still think the best way to do it is to bet more on us when we're throwing and less on everybody else. And so I think I might go back to... A $36, 6 and 8, you know, 18 and 18, 6 and 8, um, and let it build from there. And whether that means building it on the 6 or 8 or maybe even getting a hit and spreading it out. Well, um, in other words, minimum, table minimum. Yeah, probably that's how I'm going to approach everybody else. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. And then for us, I want to, you know, definitely go heavier. Well, it depends on what the point is. I've been debating on spreading out inside or just taking six and eight straight up for higher value for more units and then I am pretty confident that for first point again depending on the on the what the number is and probably do at least probably do five times odds sure at least on the first point, if not more. I'd like to be able to do that, but bankroll dictates. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that 
Yeah, you know, my bad. I take a swing. The question is, is when do you take that swing? Do you do it at the beginning of your session, or do you do it towards the end of your session? And that's well, and I we, think that's, that's some. That's you know the judgment call that the ex, the experience that we have has to come into play. Well, and 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 believe me, and we can zig and zag at the inappropriate times every time. So you know. Well, so two trips ago we won on the very first roll. Yeah. And then last trip. We won, but it was not at the beginning. It was just kind of even throughout the day, and it was a short trip. So again, we're just looking for the opportunity to meet our 20% plus win goal. Yes. And try not to spend more than, well, I keep saying try not to spend too much time there, but it's all about catching a roll. Yeah. It's just being at the table and having chips on the on, on on the table at the right time. Well, I mean, you have to. We, we're always very conscious of how much exposure we have on the table. I mean, that's that's something you always have to really pay attention to: is how much money is exposed, how much money are you exposed to lose? You know, if it's seven shows on the next roll, you know, you have three hundred dollars sixes and eights and. Seventy-five dollar fives and nines. I mean, that's a lot of money to have up there. You know, and what role is it? It's seven hundred and fifty dollars. You know, is this their second point? I mean, all of a sudden you you got a lot of risk for the exposure. Well, and I don't think we have that much on a random roll. I think that's no, money that we I'm have just, on you us. Know, I'm just hypothetical sure. examples. But I mean, that those are goals that we want to do. Is you, I mean, you want to have that kind of money out there, but. You know, that's the thing. It's it's you've got to really watch how much money is exposed to be lost. You know, if that much money's out there, hopefully you've already taken one of those, if not, or a bigger bet. Well, and you know, we we don't talk about our exact strategies when we play. Well, we we dance around them a lot. But, I mean, our idea is to go heavy on the first point, you know, the first roll or two and then regress. And with that, I think, you know, if you can if you can start with 156 and 8 and hit one and get 175 and then come back with two $60 bets on 6 and 8, but then they're paid for, and then you hit those a couple more times, I would regress again, though. I still, yeah. wouldn't, I still wouldn't even keep it there. I mean, unless you're pressing, but I still think, you know, it's inevitable that that seven's going to roll. I'm not, you know, looking for the guy to roll 30 rolls. I'm looking for a guy just to get me five or six rolls and hopefully hit a couple of sixes and eights in that. Yeah, the, waiting for that one roller is not the way we're trying to play. We're we're trying to play the average roller. And the average roller goes about maybe 10, 12 rolls. 8 to, eight to 12. Uh, the question is, is do they hit inside numbers? Do they hit points? Right, are they 11s and 3s and here's a 4 and here's exactly. a 5 and I'm on 6 and 8. Yeah. Right, yeah. Or, you know, you're on the field and here come the 5s. <laughs> or I'm on the 5 and here comes the field. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it's, it's the... Zigging and zagging that that's the fun of the game where, you know, are you in step with it, are you ahead of it, or are you behind it? But you know, well, three three field numbers just rolled. Is the fourth one gonna be a field? Well, statistically, the answer is it, it had the same chance on every roll. Every single roll. But there is that rhythm to a table and well that's why it's still called well, gambling there are definitely moments when you can catch the table changing and you can notice but you have to act upon it you can't just notice it and that's that's a part of learning the game of craps of being around the table is you learn these well and, and some of them are superstitions but you know it some of them are just habits, you know, and, and you keep your eye out. I mean, that's the thing. If you don't pay attention, you won't see them. Well, you definitely have to pay attention. It's, you know, it's it's a 
very fast paced game because if you are not paying attention um, your money can be swept away in, a, in, in well, how long does it take for two dice to be thrown from one side of the table to the Less other than 10 seconds yeah well, just a second or two and all of a sudden your chips can be gone yeah, oh, yeah that's that's one of those things we like looking at the table watching the table for is is when we can see positive change or we when we can start to see negative change and then you know can we help you know the positive change i think that's that's what we're trying to do or we're starting to see is you know we can we can uh develop uh, well and i would say the one trend that we need to try to stay on top of is um when the table goes cold and all of a sudden two or three people have you know rolled and it's and sevened out within a roll or two and that table's gone that cold that's when we need to try to jump on the don't you underestimate the power of the dark side yeah well and, and we, we, we don't need to try to play through the negative you know when the table's gone cold we don't try to need to play through that by playing positive we need to try to play through that by switching sides and, and well i think you know it's 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 situational crafts um like i talked about the, the couple times when you know the dice go off the table and i'll you know turn off all my bets and then hop the sevens you know and then that wins you know that's situational crafts you know to try to find these situations where you know you you can well, have a little bit of an edge or an advantage uh, on that one play, but you got to know how to play craps in order because it's basically you're trying to take advantage of a one roll bet because that's you know the the higher payouts on those one roll bets and that's what you're you're <laughs> that's the whole point of taking a shot. Sure, but instead of having to put sixty or ninety or a hundred oh, exactly. something out there, you're only putting a nickel or something. Oh yeah. You know? Well, a nickel to win seventy five. And just take well, just taking a stab at it. Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's what makes the horn fun. You know, when you put when you put twenty dollars on the horn, then you know everything's got a nickel. Then you know now that twenty dollar bet's when you you know what sixty? Seventy five. Seventy five. Fifteen times five is seventy five. Or if it was a well, and then minus or, the other right. Then minus the fifteen. Or thirty. Is Sixty. Or 30 uh, times 5 would be 150. True. On the 2 and 12. All right. So. But, I mean, well, and that's the thing. I don't know. Well. We've done it, but I don't necessarily think the field bet is the proper way to go. Well, we don't think that any of the proposition bets are really good bets. However, with that no. being said, sometimes you do try, try to take a poke at it and try yeah, to. It's, it's the it's the entertainment. It's the part of gambling that you like. Well, we we've noticed that you know when somebody rolls a yo or a three, uh, that the next roll very well could be. Uh, they tend to repeat. They Long tend, numbers tend to repeat. They tend to repeat, and so you know once that if the eleven hits, it might be worth. You know, throwing a five dollar chip on on the horn and picking you know high yo or something you know horn high yo whatever whatever you feel like might come again and get and and then you've got a small stab at it and if it doesn't hit well it was only a red chip right and I mean you're not making that play all the time you're just well, making that, it that is the thing it's it's when you're taking chances every once in a while you're not playing it every single bet and that's what we talk about when we see people playing. They're playing it every single bet. They're putting, you know, $100 hard tens every single bet. You know, they're, and they're only winning once every eight times. Right. <laughs> you know, and you just can't sustain it. But you can take a stab every once in a while. I mean, people say taking your shot, but it's, it's taking a gamble. But an educated gamble at a craps table, which, you know, if you can feel comfortable at it, if it's got a good vibe with it, I mean, if everybody's having a good time, if you don't have a couple of asshole don't players at the end of the table fucking with your karma. Or that one guy that's waiting to throw his field bet right when you're about to pitch your uh, dice. Yeah, hopefully nobody's interrupting your, yeah. 
I hate that guy. Yeah, that's a, that's a the late better. And he and, and he does it every time yeah. for that reason. Yeah, the late the late better, the late field well it's even better, the late field better who isn't even at the table. He right, just shows right, up yeah. to the he just <laughs> can he, I squeeze he, in? Can here? I squeeze in? I just want to put a bet down while the dice are out yeah. or coming out. Uh, Or the guy that buys in for a hundred dollars in the middle of your roll and then doesn't bat. Oh, even worse, buys in for twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. And you've got three hundred dollars out there. Yeah, and I think three fives and five ones too. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things we don't like seeing. But then again, I think that's the other thing that we start. I start talking about weekend nights. You know, I think that's something we started figuring out is when we like to play and when we don't like to play. Um, I do believe this. We don't like to play when we lose. <laughs> this is um, true. And so if you look at historically, when do we lose, um, we're not very successful in the evening. Yeah, we tend to start, we, we tend to start drinking in the evening. Well, I, I think we're definitely morning and morning to happy hour like 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 a regular work day kind of like we were 80 years old almost and i could see i mean we used to get up around you know four in the morning yeah we did try that for a while um, i hated you, you know for that. that was but that was that was part of basic training yeah but you know it was just so difficult to do in vegas because in vegas like you you're if you're going to bed at 10 o'clock in vegas something is wrong with you and then we're waking up at well, 4 o'clock in that. the morning. Yeah, I, I would say we, yeah, we probably didn't do that right. We should have just stayed up all night. Well, no, then we would have been fatigued. But see, there there you go. If, you're, if your whole goal is to gamble when it's dead, then yeah, you get up at 4 in the morning. And we did that, and it was dead. But we also found out that we didn't have to get up that early. Yeah, we found that in Vegas, nobody wakes up until about 9. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, actually there's a lot of people, a lot of places that'll shut down their tables if they don't have people. But but most places would have one table going. Yeah, most places keep one going. But I mean, you, you know, you think about the labor. You've got three or four people having yep. to run one table. Yeah. But you got somebody in charge of the pit. You got at least a stick man or two dealers, and then you know maybe a floater, depending on what else is in the pit. If there's more craps tables or if it's, you know, blackjack and other games. We were talking about a, a crap schedule of when we like to play, when we don't like to play, and where we think are optimum times to play. And I think, you know, we, we kind of talked a little bit about there's, you know, kind of like a crap season. Well, we do that because we don't like to travel during the summer because that's when every well, and that's when casinos are going to be our busy. conditions. Yeah. In which case, not crowded. Plus, we don't like to go to a desert during the summer. No, no. Well, and you also are trying to get you know affordable uh, Air airfare tickets, yeah. and, and things like that. And so when you're doing that, then it's always off season. You know, then it's always going to be off holiday. It's not on the holiday. I mean, and that's also when you're getting the comped rooms from all the gr the nice places. Well, and believe me, nobody wants to see us at a Las Vegas pool. <laughs> but then again, it's so hot down there that they do give away pretty good comps during the summertime. And their pool situations are pretty freaking cool. So. But yeah, for us, we find that we do most of our seasonal trips, uh, I say fall and spring. But it also kind of coordinates, well, my birthday's in the spring, right yeah, before summer winter. you know and yours is right after the new year and so that's when we've done a lot of it yeah i say fall but actually the winter uh you know either january or may is when we've done well there was this this pre-holiday thing that we noticed where it was very affordable to go to vegas like the week before the week after thanksgiving right and you know the the, the beginning of, of december 
was, well, was affordable. Actually, so that's, I mean, the seasons for us is January, mid-January for your birthday, yeah. early May for my birthday, and then usually one trip somewhere in November or December because of that. Yeah. And then otherwise it's local. Otherwise then we're just driving to Lake Charles. Yeah. Of course, we keep going back and forth about how our Vegas trips um, aren't as successful as our Lake Charles trips because, you know, we're there longer and we're, you know, yada, yeah, yada, yada. Yeah, we think it's primarily a comfort level of, you know, you're, you're more comfortable in, in the place that you're at more often. And so, therefore, we're not in Vegas as often as our home casino. Therefore, we're going to be more successful at our home casino. Hey, well, and then there's less heat there, too. Right. I yeah. mean, you're always, you don't know. Yeah, but even last time we were in Vegas, we didn't get any heat because no. we've learned to hit the back wall. No. Well, and I guess I, the one thing about Vegas is I would like to get to know the dealers better and have some favorite Yeah, dealers. but that's hard. That was a cool trip, though. And then that we stayed downtown and on the Strip in the same week. Yeah. No, that was a cool trip. Uh, it was it was an exhausting trip because there was a lot of plane travel on that. Yeah, a lot of a lot of airport stuff. But we make it as easy as possible. No, no, yeah. Well, and the other thing is we try not to gamble when we show up. You know, we got to decompress a little bit, so we usually don't. We wait until the morning to go gamble. Well, when we first got to Blackhawk, I mean, we needed time to scout it out anyway. Yeah. And how many casinos? I mean, there were eight or nine, ten casinos right there? They've got... We stayed at the Ameristar, which is the sister property or cousin property of La Berge in Lake Charles. Right. So we were able to get a comp room there. And then across the street from them, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... There's, a, there's at least eight. Um, they've got a few casinos with just slot machines. Right, they know, definitely had some very, very small I think they might lines, have a bubble yeah. craps machine. Push the button! Or, you know, they definitely have the... I think they're going to more of an automated casino where they didn't really have uh, people in it. It was just machines. So, yeah, so the roulette, the craps, uh, the blackjack was all uh, AI. Or, or, you know, automated. Which I think, you know, it's, that's not a bad idea for small casinos, just not every casino. Now, I will say the only the, oh, a big negative for Black Hawk was the distance between the airport and, and it. I mean, we oh, ended up yeah. paying. Yeah, I mean, no. we got we got a basically a limo to take or, you know, to pick us up from the airport. Well, and, yeah, if you go straight from the airport to Black Hawk, it is well over an hour, uh, probably an hour and a half to get, or hour 20 minutes. And uh, an expensive cab ride or limo ride or however you want to take it. Um, but the other thing is, you know, the airport is a, quite a distance from the city of Denver as well. And so even if you stay there, that's kind of halfway, if you will. Uh, you know, so the thought is you go to Black, or if you're on your way to Black Hawk, you go to Denver. Because uh, last time I went, I was staying in the city, and then I Ubered from Denver to Blackhawk, and that was like 45-minute drive, and then it was like a well, about a $40, $50 Uber ride. So that'd be the way to go, as opposed to straight from the airport, so it's, it's an hour and a half. Yeah. I might as well take in, you know, Denver. Yeah, because actually what's funny is, is I've been to Colorado, but I've not been to Denver. Yeah. Because we went straight to Blackhawk. Yeah. No, so, I mean, that would... But, again, then you're paying for hotels downtown as opposed to getting comped hotels in Blackhawk. You know, it, it tends to be a little more expensive of a gambling outing than if you would go to Vegas. You know, in which case all your rooms are comped. So, yeah, unless you could use points or something at a, you know, another hotel downtown. But we haven't really looked into that yet. So, but 
then uh, I guess we talked about we'd probably like to go back to downtown on our next trip to Vegas. And that would yeah, be I mean, we, we love the bright lights of, of the Strip, but we also, downtown is, is a fun place well, to be, convenient. too. it's convenient. I like the fact that you can literally go, you know, 50 feet and you're in another casino. Yeah, instead of... Instead of, like, I got to go through an entire mall. Yeah. Or, you know, walk walk a half a mile to get to the next door that I have to walk into to get into the casino. And then they're always putting the craps tables in the back of the casinos, like... Exiting through the gift shop. Like that milk, milk and eggs they always put in the back. So you walk through the entire store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But on the on uh, Fremont, Binions and Four Queens and hell, even the D is pretty close to the front door. Yeah. You know, almost like the Cromwell is close to the front door. That's actually the Cromwell would fit downtown, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, it would fit better downtown than it. We, we like it where it's yeah. at, but yeah. And then Biloxi, we dug, but we need a car because well, because those casinos were yeah they were not close at all. You had pairs. Everything was paired up, but you'd have to go from one pair to the next pair, and then. I mean, I guess you could Uber and, and cab it, but... Well, and the problem well, the problem with Biloxi is there's not an airport close to it, so you're having to drive out there anyway. But the good part about it is it's not like, it, you know, it was all free parking. Yeah. So yeah. it didn't cost us money to park. Well, and it was, yeah, it's an affordable town where, you know, the majority of bets were 5 and $10, you know, and... Well, and all the casinos were really nice because they had just all been rebuilt. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and they weren't completely crazy. I could probably see during the summertime, and that would be a thing. Going to, we talked about this, going to Biloxi, the time to go would be in the wintertime off-season. Right. You know, that's when they're giving away the free rooms. That's when they're wanting tourism. So, and then you don't want to be there for the crowds, and so it's basically on the water, on the Gulf. You know, it's known for fishing and, and all that. So, you start going off season, that's the time to go to a beach town. But you need a car. But they got a ton of seafood buffet stuff. Well, of course they. And do. then the comps I'm getting are like ten bucks. They got their local comp things going too, but they're always promoting the buffets. Yeah, that would be the deal, is if you if you really want a seafood buffet, Biloxi would be the place to go. All those places have seafood buffets because they're on the water. Well, it's all, yeah, it's a, you have to. Mm -hmm. We've got a well. We love New Orleans for because it's New Orleans, and then it happens to have gambling in it. We've got a love-hate relationship with the Harris there. <laughs> you do more than I. Uh, yeah. And then uh, there are two more casinos in the area that we still haven't been to, so there's some experimenting to do. Well, because to us, flying to New Orleans makes more sense than driving to New Orleans. Where well, Biloxi, it makes more sense to drive even though it's further. Right. And it's an hour flight to get to New Orleans versus a three-hour flight to get to Vegas. And if you can gamble, if you're only staying for a couple of days, you only need really one casino to go to. But there's two more that we haven't seen, so we could take a cab to one or maybe get a ride to one who knows but uh but no there's also the intrigue of uh new orleans as a craps city and uh it's something i still have to do some research on but you know the american craps uh for 
for the most part, started. Uh, came to America through New Orleans. And so, uh, that's one of those things that we think is pretty cool. And we'll, we'll hopefully learn more and share more with you guys as we go through. But, yeah, so New Orleans got this special place in my heart for, you know, being almost the birthplace of crops. And then also for it being the fun city that it is and the culinary place that it is. And yeah, lots of great food, lots of fun, lots of, all, you know, like there's a couple bars that we go to that are, you know, they've been here, been there for a hundred years, of years yeah. you know, and I mean, there's something um, cool about being able to go into a place like that and have a drink. Uh, just, yeah, to be around, we, Soak it we, all don't, in. we don't have that down in, in Houston, I mean, uh, that's the one thing, Houston's a new city, um, it basically started in like 1850, um, you know, so we really have no historic buildings that are, that have been saved, we've demolished everything and built new, so we don't have any culture or history, <laughs> really. So when we can see it in New Orleans and, you know, you're seeing buildings that are, you know, been around since the 17 and 1800s, uh, and then able to, to chill and, and lounge around and take it all in, that's, that's something special that we like to do. And in New Orleans is a, is a great place to do that. And they've got, well, Harris has nine crafts. They tables. do have a, they do have a few tables there. They yeah. do. Did they they had a crop list? Did they have two crop lists? I think they had two crop lists. I my memory is not that good. Yeah. Well, and I remember there were two different sizes too. They had like twelve footers and fourteen footers. That is true, also. Yeah. Yeah. Which was unusual because actually I don't know that we've ever really noticed that except there because most places will keep their tables the same size. Well, that's also more tables than we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing people or. You know, two, four, six. Yeah, I mean that's close to Aria's size. Yeah, yeah, eight or ten. I mean that's more than more than six is is a very large casino. I mean that's Golden Nugget. Golden Nugget has six. Yeah. You know, LaBerge has four. Isla Capri has two. And uh, what? Cachada has five. So. We said Biloxi, then New Orleans, <sighs> Baton Rouge. Yeah. Well, you know that was I mean, just I a guess stop it's through, really. Through, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's you could pass through. I mean, the Hollywood was a fun little place. I could see, you know, if you're there for, you know, you could probably go because they had they had a half table and a full table. Right. It just depends on the crowd. So I mean, I'm sure early earlier you go, they'll have the half table working. The, in the evenings, they've got the big table going. Um, and then La Berge in Baton Rouge is very, very nice, but it's, you know, 20 minutes from the highway. And, you know, getting a comp room there isn't that easy because it's kind of a small town. And it's in, you know, a, a big college town. You know, LSU has uh, a lot of students and a lot of family members and a lot of traffic. Well, I think Baton Rouge is also the capital. I could not argue the fact with you. Yeah, I think that's right. But anyway, if not, boom. But, uh, yeah, I think passing through, it, it's cool. And, uh, but it's not, def it's not a destination to go gamble. Not for us. Not when we have other options that yeah. are better. Well, and it's, yeah, and then it's another two, two and a half from Lake Charles, so. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know that we need to go to Shreveport. That's like four hours north. Um, I don't know that we'll go to Oklahoma. Um, majority of those casinos just turned into craps. Nobody wants to go to Oklahoma. <laughs> You know, and I, I just don't know that I see that. Even, to be honest with you, even if we had $10,000 bankrolls, um, I think on the craps table, um, the house is okay knowing that a seven can come up at any time. And that, you know, most people don't regress their bets or most people won't turn off their bets. So the house knows that 
you're still losing those bets, and you know, in the long run, they're gonna they're gonna do okay. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I mean, we're just gonna have to see that change. I don't ever see them giving us any. Ha- I mean, I don't. I can't see it. And to be honest with you, there's you know, two or three thousand dollar bankroll to at a table in at any casino is enough money to do what we want to do. Uh, if we're only playing half an hour to an hour, and we believe when we're taking those big of a swings, you shouldn't play for three hours. You know, you got to condense it down if yeah. you're going to play with that kind of. You know, if, if you're playing with bigger bets. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing minimum ta- table minimums, then yeah, you could play for four hours, six hours. But if you're going to pl- put up $150, six and eight, you can't do that for the long term. You've got to. Can, you know, you got to wait for that table to be hot and make your make your stab at it. Yeah. No, and that's what we're trying to do. We're we're looking for those opportunities. But I can't ever see them. I mean, and especially the way you know it. We tip dealers and we keep good relationships with our dealers. Uh, the dealers aren't. You know, when I think when they're on your side, you're okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, our style of play is, is, we're, we're, we're very comfortable at the table and everybody seems to be comfortable with us. You know, we just, I hate to say keep doing what we're doing, but, you know, if, if we just stay focused Stay disciplined. Which we have troubles doing sometimes. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> we, but that's, uh, it's doable. We've done it. No reason why we shouldn't be able to do it again today, other than I just jinxed myself. Yeah, you did it this time, not me. Yeah, I did it. It's only if you believe in superstitions and luck. I could use some good luck today. Yeah. No, I am excited. It's been it's been a little bit of time since we played, and uh, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna p- pass the dice the first or second turn around because it has been a little while. It's it's funny in. how you every time we go to the casino we have a routine or you know at least a routine we want to think we have yeah, and right. so we 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 have a, an approach and so we, we make these small tweaks each time we come back and yeah so so the tweak this time is you're gonna let the let the table get its momentum without you touching it see see how the table. Get a get a get a feel just for the table without you you on it, huh? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to settle in before I go for it. Let's yeah. just put it that way. I'm gonna I, try to wait for the right opportunity. You know, it's it's there's there there's been two ways that I've been playing in the past, and one is to win, and the other one is to win comps. And I've always thought about first impressions. I've talked about first impressions. See, and for me, and I, and I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Well, and, and I'm, I'm seeing the value and not. I mean, for what we're doing, for what we're doing now, you know, we're doing day trips. We don't need the hotel rooms. We don't need that. Well, stuff. we can still get that anyway. Well, I'm just saying, it's, it's. <laughs> nothing that I've got to work for anymore if I'm planning for the next six months to just be doing this, going on day trips, you know, then I can focus just on, you know, playing those minimum bets at the beginning. Yeah, and and, 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 and the truth is, like, is that's when we get in the hole. If the ta- if we walk up to the table... That and, is when we get in the hole. And, you know, we try to make a play or two just, you know, hey, just walk up, let's gamble a little bit. You know, and that's when we end up getting in the hole because we didn't get used to the table. We yeah. didn't settle in. Well, and, and you've always talked about making that first impression. I myself, um, well, as you know, I mean, you're the one that usually, I, I get comps too, but we use majority of yours. Yeah. 
No, it, it's, it's definitely the way to work comps, but it's also exactly what we talked about. You're having too much exposure out there. You know, if you, if you show up to a choppy table or a, a negative table and, you know, you got $60 sixes and eights and $100 odds. And you lose two of those, all of a sudden you're you know, down you're, four you're, or $500. Yeah. And that is not how you want to start your afternoon catching then, up. Because then it takes us all day to dig us dig Yeah, ourselves that's exactly out. what happens. Then, then you're there for three hours trying to make it all back. When you could have just waited 15 minutes. And that's... and Have, that's, the, have the cocktail waitress already come by. That, you know, that's the other thing. You've said this before, too. They've timed that. It's perfect. You know, well, when when the waitress is, is good. And it's, it's just her being a waitress. That's all it is. It's not like they... It's intentional. It just happens to be the way that wait staff works. If you're new to the table and you buy in at the table, then obviously you're going to want a drink, and so they come by. But it just so happens that it happens when you have the dice, and then they're talking to you when you have the dice, and therefore then it interrupts any sort of rhythm that you're trying to get. You either started or didn't have. So, yeah, the whole waiting a while, letting the dice pass around, wait until you get set up. Yeah, I can see, I see the value in that. Well, yeah, and, it, and just, it might, and it might be just playing, you know, well, a, a6 or a8 or... Well, we, we had done, you know, when we first started off, it was six or eights or tens and fours, you know, actually... <laughs> In Lake Charles, tens and fours have been a play. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You could you could either play single bats or you can play sisters. <laughs> yes. And that's slow play enough, and you do that at table minimum versus, yeah, table minimum or a quarter. Sure. But nothing more than that. But the choppy table is going to kill you if you don't turn it off or take it down. Yeah, it's almost like you want to hit one of those and turn it off. Eh, it depends on where it is in the roll, but still. Well, the problem with table minimum is you can't regress anywhere. Nope. So you either have to be aggressive. So if I have a, a eighteen dollar eight and it hits, you know, do you full press? Do you take the first hit? You know, you you have to decide how you want to handle it. Um, but I mean, if you're only risking a small amount, it might be worth pressing it and, and you know, pressing on the first hit and then trying to get the second hit and then maybe turning it off. Yeah. And leaving it for the next roller. Yeah, there is there is something to be, think about when you know we were talking about the average number of rolls per roller. You know, there's well, on top of that, it's well, how many eights do you think they're gonna hit? Right. You know, do you think they're gonna hit more than two? Do you think they're gonna hit four? You know, six is a repeater. You know, the odds of that are. <laughs> But we've seen it. Well, the last time we were there, I, I had $18, 6 and 8. The guy hit a, one of them, and I raised both to 30. And then I think he hit it one more time, and then I turned it off, and then he proceeded to roll like 30 rolls. Yep. And, you know, at one point I was going to turn it back on, but every time I've ever done that, then they roll a 7. Yep. So I kept it off and watched this guy go on a great roll, and I did not get much of it at all. That's... That's... Those are the roles that hurt your heart. Yeah, but in the lo but I know in the long run that doesn't happen very often. No, and that's the thing. We're playing. We're not playing for those rollers. We're playing for the average rollers. Yeah. I just want somebody to be able to roll five or six times, and then and hit the numbers we're on. <laughs> well, sure, but I mean, just give me five or six rolls, and and hopefully you hit my number yeah. once or twice. Well, and, and hit the first point.
hit the first point in five numbers, and we're good. Well, that's the whole one and six, right? Yeah. And that's how often a seven shows up, one and six times. So therefore, make your money in five. Oh, this is this is where we can go. The five count. I'm not sure I believe in the five count. Well, maybe you should explain the five count. Well, first. I hope I remember it correctly, but it's uh, <clears throat> part of uh, Frank Scobaletti's story about the captain. And I think it was his strategy of approaching the table and waiting for five rolls before he would bet on anybody. And basically said he would save because there's so many rollers that would just, set, you know, 0.7 out, you know, but after they made their fifth roll, you know, then they were qualified and, and uh, you know, then, then that's the okay to bet on them, that yeah, they're going to have I, a long I, roll. I think you hit it on the nose. However, we have found... Well... That is completely the opposite of our strategy. You know, and, and we... It's 100% opposite of what we've figured out along these years of studying crops. The probability of the seven showing gets harder and harder. It increases. And so why would you not bet on the first five rolls? Well, and we think... You know, we've discussed this before, but I think that we both agree that we feel like casinos might have paid him to write I, this. We, this makes no sense to why you would think about this, but yeah. I mean, it's the whole idea of, you know, the the rule book in the gift shop is probably not going to teach you how to win. It's going to teach you how to play. Um, you know, and so I just... It starts to make little to no sense when you start thinking about probability and the five count. It goes, it's completely backwards. We want to make bets on the first five rolls and then turn everything off after the fifth roll. You know, you, you look at all the other strategies that are, you know, what's the, uh, what was that one book where they talk about the Iron Cross? That whole thing is based on being on the first two rolls and yeah, turning off. And then turning it off. I mean, and, and again, having the discipline not to play for the length of the whole roll. Well, the five count is telling you to give up five opportunities to win money. And then go out there with money. When now... <laughs> The chances of a seven rolling are still one in six, but the first five weren't. I, I just, it, may, it starts to just lose all credibility, and then anybody that reinforces it, it just doesn't, it just seems like they might, you know, someone else might be, uh, seems like a small conspiracy. And, uh, well... It's just very, very odd because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but it, to you the know, way we play. We say that, but how long did we did we follow it? Oh, well, no, absolutely. Well, we followed it for a little bit when we first got started because we beginning. were listening to everybody. Yeah. Well, he would, Frank was our first big author that we read. We read more of his book. But I well, think we were still on the practice table at that time. We're talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? I mean, we're talking about practice. So it didn't cost us money. We were. Well, we thought it was a way to, uh, well, you know what? We tried it, and then we started getting yelled at at the craps table because we weren't putting bets down in the first five rolls, and the dealers were like, are you going to bet or not? <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember getting some heat for not, for not betting when we show up to a table? Not really. I remember it a little bit. Because, yeah, we were we were listening to everybody's philosophies. And that was one, the five count. 
you know, hold off until you can qualify a shooter. How do you qualify a shooter? Wait five rolls. If they can keep going for five rolls, then they're probably going to have a, you know, the odds of them having a good roll are better. It's still one in six. And then I would say there's more, more writing on who the shooter is and the conditions of the table. Not just the count of five. Yeah. So that's a really weird one we've been thinking about a little bit. Because again, it's... Why wouldn't you bet on the first five rolls? Well, it's when I'm going to put well, more, and, and, more of my money out than on the, on the sixth or seventh roll. I'm probably going to be off by that point. Well, and, and you're pressing on those for, in those first five rolls, too. You're not pressing after those first five rolls. Right. Again, we, we, we're, playing, well, we're playing regression, and he's not, obviously. But it doesn't make much sense. I mean, unless you're going for that, trying to find that one roller. But still searching for that one roller, you're going to lose on that 7th, 8th, ninth roll. In which case, you could have already been down. And made some money, hopefully. Yeah. That's like, that's like saying... Don't play the first point, play the second point. Yeah, right. Yeah, don't play the first or second point. Wait for that third point. Yeah, wait point. for the third point. Because, you know, once they hit the first two, the and third the, one is a definite. And you, and you definitely got to, you know, don't go single. Because they know what they're doing after they hit their second <laughs> point. Well, same thing with their fifth. Oh, they're only one point away from the fire bat. <laughs> but what, what, what have we noticed? Is if somebody was shooting for a 12, that was what they needed for the ATS, and they'll seven out, yeah. you should maybe bet on it for the next roller. There's a couple of those. So, yeah, so here's here's your little situational craps again. So, yeah, one of the things that we've noticed... Oh, shit. Okay, so one of the things we noticed was... Wait, what is it again? The 12 oh. ATS. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things we noticed was... When the table seven's out, usually whatever the number was last tried for comes up on the first roll it, it of could, the next shooter. We could be talking about either the point or, or a number, the, or or a number, number on, on the, the bonus on the, on the ATS, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, sometimes it's, you know, if they needed a 12 or needed a 2 or, hell, needed a 9. Yeah, whatever it could You know, be. that'll come. And then sometimes, most times, too whatever the point was that they were trying to hit and didn't, that will sometimes become the next point again. So, you know, hopping those, uh, those, that's your, those are situations that, well, and that those, we would And that's on. an easy 5 or $10 bet that you're not having to throw a lot of money out no, on. Yeah, you're, we have noticed that, that especially when the, the whole table is really rooting for that three or whatever. Oh, yeah. No, when the, the table has positive energy and they, you know, they hit one half of the ATS and didn't hit the other half. And they're just waiting for that one number. And actually, that's it. It's, they've already hit half. Right. They're missing one number. And so, yeah, the energy uh, at the table. I will say, though, that it, it works even if they're trying to hit the first half yeah, and they okay. seven out. I, we've seen that number re come up. Yeah. But yeah, I think you're right. It's, it's, everybody's rooting for that number. There's so much energy that, that was going out for that number that it, what it, it, it still is there's there's a uh, residue still on the Resi table <laughs> residual uh, residual karma, effects karma, yeah. yeah well I, you know whatever it is it, it it comes up and and it might be a enough to notice it might be a two roll bet where you throw yeah. a nickel out for the the next shooter well, for that first one and the second one just to if it well, didn't hit the first time that's how we talk about the uh, dice off the table right you know dice off the table we're turning our rolls off the fir after the first roll and sometimes even after the second roll. Sometimes the whole roll or the rest of his rolls. Sometimes you just need an out to get off the table. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to play everybody's you roll. You don't have to play every single. And that, and to be honest with you, I think you'll, you'll be much more successful 
if you can learn that. If well, you can, if, if you go to just the simple fact of trying to have a win goal per person, I mean, okay, I beat this person. Okay, then you get to the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. And you can beat them by different values, but... Well, and it's not in... It's not that you're beating that person, you're meeting your goal. Well, true, true, true. You're, it, you're not beating a person, you're, you're beating the game. The, yes. Playing the game. Well, trying to milk the game. But yeah, if you say you want to win 20 or $25 per person... And, and that's very doable. That, and, and you you're playing a six or eight for thirty dollars, and, and, and the first roll hits. If you've got the discipline to be able to go ahead and say, "All right, turn me off. I'll wait for the next roller." Yeah. I think in the long, you know, and I will say that's hard to do. Oh. It's well, hard that's the thing. Do. It it becomes it's 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 not fun. And then therefore, I'm not having fun at the craps table. Why am I do? You know what? Well, and that's where you have to define, do I want to have fun or do I want to make money? Yeah. But, and I think that's, that's something everybody needs to decide, and that's something we've already decided, is we, we're playing to make money. Um, we just happen to have fun when we make money. And we don't mind... Well, anytime we make money, we have fun. I have a damn good time when we make money. And so it doesn't really matter how much money we make. Every time we make money, we have fun. So as long as we make money, we have fun no matter what the amount. It's better than not making money. Uh, so yeah, so what? Modest goals keep us happy? Same? Well, achievable, achievable goals. You know, I don't want to walk up and say, okay, I've got a $2,000 bankroll that I'm going to play with today, and I need to double it. You know, right. I mean, that's a little uh, unreal, uh, maybe not unrealistic, but that's going to be hard to achieve on a regular basis. Well, pressure you don't need. Right. Now, to walk up to a table with a $2,000 bank and say, okay, I'd like to make 400 that seems much more achievable. The Red Eye Gamblers present... A, a moment, moment, moment in, in Craps, craps his history. History. history traces dice games that would eventually influence and become craps back to ancient Egypt. Evidence of the oldest game of chance that used dice was in Egypt in 1573 BC. These dice are called Theban dice and are actually on display at the Egyptian Museum in Berlin, Germany. This has been a, a moment, moment, moment in, in Craps, craps, craps his history. history. Now I was going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, the all tall small uh, bonus strategy. Um, we've graduated from um, the 111 to the 212 to the 515. Mm, don't forget the 424. Well, you like the 424. Um, and when we're saying this, this is the outsides are higher than the middle because the odds of you hitting one side or the other are better than you hitting the entire bet. So um, it pays out better. We've hit a ton of halves without hitting the whole thing and we've been paid for it with having you know more money on the outside. So we like doing that quite a bit. So, hence, four two four five one five. I've even uh, done seven one seven. <laughs> I have. I know you have, and every dealer has really looked at you really funny after that. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I did not care. But we are now. I am a regular at the ten five ten, and I am uh, contemplating now of going to possibly. Uh, 25, 5, 25. And, or was I, should I go back to 20, 10, 20? No, I like the 25. 25, 5, 25. 25, yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Well, and I could actually throw, I could throw another nickel out there and go 2, 1, 2 for the dealers and make it a $60 total bet. That way it's not so weird. 
Well, and, and and I've had one positive karma on that bet anyway, so a two on two is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Because we see we see a lot of people go, you know, five twenty five five. Yep. And we just feel like, yeah, I mean, if that if the whole thing hits, yeah, you're gonna make a nice chunk of change. And the problem is, yeah. is, is just one side hits a lot of times, and then you know, I mean, the full ATS does not hit. Actually, we haven't seen the full ATS in a in a while. Uh, we see it. It's been a little while since we've seen it. The full. I'd say maybe ten times a year. Well, it depends on how often. That's we're going, how often but, yeah. we go, yeah. And here lately, we haven't been spending as much time on the tables. I know. But. We, yeah. we truly do believe that you have a much better chance of hitting half of it. So we feel like it's better to put the bigger yep. part of your money on the big or the small and put, you know, obviously still. It's like playing sisters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously still play something in the in the, in on the, the all. Yeah, but, but it doesn't have to be because it pays 175 or 150 to 1. Yeah, so if you put 5 on it, that's paying that's, 825. 875? 875. Yeah, I mean, and so, so I mean, that's, that's plenty to risk. But you're better off putting 25 on the... Well, and the other thing is, is this is just the bonus bet. You're still going to be in on the 6 and 8. You're still going to be out there, hopefully. So, and if they're able to hit the all, then hopefully you made some money in addition to this yeah. anyway. So you're catching up for that, you know, a little bit of risk that you lost out on. So, but we're talking about betting on ourselves at a higher limit. Yeah, that's not, I that's not a bet. You this can't, would well, not you, be something I you, would bet on other people. You can't do it every time. Well, there again, you know. it's, yeah, you don't make this bet all the time. It's, you take your, well, when you see, when you see a guy at the table or he's already had a couple of good rolls and you have a feeling about him, this is one way you step it up. But then, see, I'd go with 25, you, you know, 10, 5, 10. 10, 5, 10. Well, and then the other thing is the, the hedge with your bonus bet is your pass line. I might blow your mind with a 12-1-12. Will you stop doing that? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't really blow my mind. It would just... I can just see the dealer count now 12 and 12. <laughs> well, now, they're, they're, if, if it's not a $10 table, we're okay. I mean, if it's a $10 table, then you're fine. <laughs> but... So, yeah, so the, the pass line then is your hedge because if the seven comes, then you lose your bonus bet, but then you win on the pass line. And so as long as your pass line bet is equal to the equal or more than the money on the bonus, then that's your hedge. I guess, or you could put, uh, put money on the any seven if you wanted to hedge it. But... I think it's easier just to put money on the pass line because you're also doing it at, at the beginning of the roll. Right. You know, so you're you're hopeful that this guy's going to roll the bonus anyway. Uh, you know, start off with some good karma on the pass line. Well, I would rather, you know, although we don't really like contract bets, I would rather put it on, on the pass line on the first roll to protect my uh, ATS than to hop the sevens because to hop the sevens, is only one roll, and you know, yeah. If it if the seven comes up, you'll make a little bit of money, but you know, you, you don't have a chance of, uh, of getting your money back like you do on the pass line. Right. Seven hundred and fifty million dollar golden nugget, and I don't know what LeBurge cost to build, but I would imagine it was four or five hundred million. You know. And yet they have the worst intersection to get into the property. Right. <laughs> well, you know, it could have a lot of lawyers. You know, that could be very popular for lawyers. Right. Ambulance drivers. <clears throat> well, how about this? If you can't get through that intersection, you're not lucky enough to go to the casino. <laughs> yeah. Any last words? Super califragilistic XB All right. Uh, no go, trademark on that. I want to see a whole bunch of sixes and eights today. Yeah, hard sixes and eights. That would be fun. Yeah, and I guess just 
There's comfortable tables. Actually, inside numbers. I won't even be that specific. I won't say six or eight. I'll say inside numbers. It's like hard inside numbers. I'd like <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd like to. I'd like to see inside numbers, but yeah, hard, hard. <laughs> yeah, hard inside, inside numbers. numbers would be. Once again, back to the six and eight. Yes. Oh, they do not look busy at all. Okay. All right. Wish us luck. All right. So we're leaving Golden Nugget. I guess a little lighter in our pockets. Disastrous day. Nothing went our way. Well, I guess that's not true. We hit a few points, but... I said disastrous is a little extreme. We just didn't have a good day. I mean, there was just... Not good opportunities. Yeah, I mean, we... we well, we didn't even roll that many, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, what, three? Maybe three in the morning and two, at, two in the second session. What are you calling morning? We got here afternoon. No. Three in the first session, two in the second session. Ah. But that was enough to... Well, you passed on your first couple rolls. That's true. I did. Once. Well, we started on a crapless table today, too. Yeah, we couldn't... Uh, the spots that we wanted to get into, uh, the $15 table was packed, and then the... Uh, $25 table had a guy in Well, they had a, the second table was a $25 table instead of a 15 And then, yeah, the, he, there was, our spots were not available on the $25 table, so we elected to uh, walk around for a bit and see what we could find, and the only thing we could find was the crapless table. So we started there for a little bit, which wasn't terrible. Although you... Your first roll, your first point was an 11. Yes. Which, which is uh, always That's perfect. exactly what we were talking about. Well, and it was a winner. Did you win it? No, I'm saying it would have been a winner if it was just a regular pass line bet on a regular crap stable. Well, yeah, I was saying. A yo would have been a winner. I don't, well, I don't think you even hit that point, did you? I did not. Yeah. But I actually rolled, I, it was a decent roll. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. Just makes it difficult to... Yeah, it definitely makes Play it difficult. Line. Yeah, well, I just, who are you telling? And believe me, I mean, that was not my intentions of rolling an 11, but that is what <laughs> the dice gods gave me. Wow. But yeah, there was just. <clears throat> tables were choppy and uneventful. say that I think I was a little rusty. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Well, that's okay. You know, it just means next time we come back. I mean, did you follow your plan? I did. I mean, it's not that we made terrible plays. I, I limited limited my bets on other people and then swung for the fences when it was you and me and that was the problem. <laughs> Maybe I should have done it the other way around. No, but I mean, we always talk about if we're going to put money out on the table. Yeah. If we were going to put a lot out there, we want it to be on, on us. And um, and I kept my, you know, bets, like I said, to a minimum again with everybody else. And I was, you know, probably close to even with everybody. I mean, it, you know, I wasn't making it a ton of money off of anybody. And then when, when it was our turn, you know, kind of put some money up there uh, and try to hit it. And yeah, it seemed like we were playing inside numbers or, you know, three bets and one would hit and then seven out and so we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to ever catch up <clears throat> we were always down a bet or more yeah it was definitely a choppy table didn't really see anybody uh, nothing really out yeah no was it actually it was kind of a, a, a blah day I mean the $15 table that was there had a lot of people at it, but I think they were
were discarded because it was a $15 table. You know, the art, the $25 table got crowded, you know, after a while. And then, uh, and then it know, went ice and cold. And then it just died, yeah. And then it just was going up and down. But I mean, it wasn't like, it was definitely a don't table either. You know, there were a lot of back to backs. Yeah, that one hillbilly looking guy, he, uh, he was a master of back to backs. Yeah, no, there were a lot of a lot of back to back numbers. First points were going pretty well for a while. And then what the only only ATS that hit was somebody that we didn't play on when we first got there. Well, we had just gotten there. We were getting our money, and they didn't wait for us. They let the dice go. So I did. I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to well, play this guy. You probably weren't going to bet on it anyway. Not the bonus. I, I bet on the bonus on a few other people. Not when you first show up to a table. True. I mean, that's the whole conversation we had on the way was, I'm not going to bet. I'm going to watch the table. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, what? So you're going to watch the table by betting? Well, and I watch, and my, the first person that I watched probably had the best role of the day that I saw. Right, well. And I was off of it because I was watching the table. Yeah. We've done that before. I mean, that's the whole point of having etiquette at the table and not buying into a big role. I mean, we've seen it before. Oh, we know exactly what happened. That's what we always joke. I know how to put an end to this. Let me place a bet. Yeah. Yeah, there was a little bit of that. But yeah, just kind of medium rolls. Like, you know, everybody was like, wow, well, three to seven rolls. Yeah, maybe even, you know, eight or nine, but, you know, they weren't hitting, they were hitting fours and elevens and threes and. Yeah. Or if I was on six, eight, and nine, then they would hit a five. I was just saying they were hitting the opposite sister of whatever you were on. Yeah. You know, it's when the point was something else, I was on the eight, and the eight didn't hit, and then they made the point, and then the next point is the eight, and I moved my bet off the eight to another, and then they back to back eight it, and I don't even hit the number because I wasn't because I took my money off the eight. That happened more than once. I'm thinking I just need to leave that bet. On fours, the fours and tens seem to be hopping a little bit today. Not when I was betting on them. <laughs> right. Yeah, fives and nines were hot for a while, and then I bet on those, and they stopped. Fours and tens were hot for a while, I bet on them, and they stopped. <laughs> yeah. I yeah today I was behind. I was a half step behind on everything today. I thought I rolled all right, but when I was one away from from the tall, and then I think the two and the three away from the small. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there wasn't. I mean, there wasn't the repetitive sixes and eights like we've seen. There were a lot of hard ways. Yeah, I threw I threw three hard ways in a row. Eight, yeah, ten, hard two, tens four. And hard fours hit. Yeah, that would be the one thing that we don't do on ourselves that we might consider doing. Playing the hard ways. Yeah. So it's because we tend if our dice are on, then we're hitting those. Well, if you have a thirty dollar bet. Then five dollars is well, yeah. might not, but when you're doing sixty, I feel like well they're five, you know. Well, no, that's actually I'm thinking sixty too. Yeah. Because then you could throw easy five dollars out on all of them.
Uh, once again, I don't think it's something you can do every play, but no. yeah, once in a while. But I mean, we've argued that for the bonus though too. And now what have we done? Increase the bonus. Do as I say, not as I do. Right. No. Did it bonus? You had a couple of first points. I had a couple of first points. I used a lot of uh, the comp cash that I had. I was able to get. I basically got everything out of that. But then I just kept squeaking away. Sixty bucks here, thirty-five bucks there. And yeah. You know, <clears throat> the fifty-dollar odds or the seventy-five-dollar odds. Yeah, it's it's funny how you make two, three mistakes or bad plays or bad beats, and then all of a sudden a third of your bankroll is gone. Right. Oh, it, that can happen very quickly. You know, and then you're like, oh, all right, what do I do now? Do I now I play catch up, <sighs> or do I pull out? And well, and then we come back another day. Well, the problem we've got is it been a while since we've been here, so we're jumped into play. So we, I'd rather go in a little deeper and lose a little more knowing that I haven't been here in a while, knowing that I could probably pull myself out, then I don't. And then you get past your 50% mark. Yeah. And then you don't have a good drive home. That's a long, I was just going to say, that's it's a little long little. drive home. Well, but, I mean, I'm usually Mr. Positive, but you can't win every single time you go to the casino. Even though I said that, you know, 10% or 20% win is all we need. I was there. We were both there. We had a 10% win probably within the first half hour. Actually, it was because we both hit our first points. And then we had a, we had good odds on our first points. And so yeah. at that moment, again, we were up. But what? We're, like, there we go back again to how much are we going to gamble? We're not there just to roll once and win and leave. That's, that's the wrong way to approach it. The Red Eye Gamblers present a, a moment, moment, moment in, in craps, 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 craps his history. history. Dice games date back to the Roman Empire. Roman soldiers would file down pig's knuckles into the shapes of cubes and throw them onto their shields. The term to roll the bones is said to have originated from this version of the game. This has been a, a moment, moment, moment in, in craps, 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 craps his history. history. So yeah, Golden Nugget was fairly packed. Well, full. And then... Uh, it was a strong Sunday crowd. I don't know that packed or full is really Yeah, the right they were words. giving away a, a comforter. And I guess we already got a comforter, so that's why we didn't get on the list. But we did not get on the list with the free gift today. I'm quite upset about this. But we did... Uh, we did eat for free and uh, had another 10 or $15 to bet with, or $30 for Golden Nugget. But uh, they had, so they had three tables going. One was crapless. They had a $15 and then a, a $25 table. And then, uh, yeah, the $15 was packed. The crapless and the $25 was going up and down with the crowd level, depending on whether the table was warm or not. But they were both pretty shitty. I don't know that the uh, the regular fifteen dollar craps table was any good. I think it was just crowded. Yeah, we it was so shoulder to shoulder. We never really even stopped and watched. No, but it didn't look like it'd be any fun because everybody was so crowded. I mean, they had at least six people on each side. Oh, more. Two, three, yeah, at least. Yeah. So that's that's just. 
too much. At least to be comfortable, or at least to, you know, uh, play, play out on an environment that you think you're going to do well in. I don't know. I don't like it when, when it gets that crowded. The, uh, the dealers and the box people, everybody was the normal people. Um, you know, we saw a lot of our regular crowd there. And so we thought we could do pretty well there, but, you know, just didn't have the day we'd like. And then we did walk over to uh, La Berge, and uh, they had three of their four tables going, but they actually, uh, looks like they might have recarpeted their casino. They and may so, have done a little spring cleaning. Yeah, they uh, they moved the layout out a little bit. They used to have all four craps tables next to each other, you know, back to back, and now they've split them to two and two with uh, some blackjack in between them. So yeah, they spread spread things out a little bit over at the at La Berge Casino. Uh, but all three of those tables, in which case I think one was twenty five and the other two were fifteen. Um, all three of those were packed. Yeah, we they, really have trouble getting mm -hmm. onto those tables. Yeah, La Berge, they just seem to always have people at their, t at their tables. We never seem to see them when they're empty. So, yeah, so again, we couldn't, we didn't play over there because they were packed. Um, and so we just walked in and walked out, but did notice that they had brand new carpet, so the carpet actually felt nice. Yeah, it did feel good. You know, and we, you're uh, skipping, we've talked about that before. And you're missing the part of the story where we made $15. Well, it had nothing to do with craps table. No, it didn't, but... No. But yeah, we did have free money. And, uh, or comp money that we had to use, and so we ended up playing roulette because we couldn't get on the craps table. So... And we went black. Yes. Black one. So we got we got lucky there. Yeah, I don't. And, and I I wasn't even looking at the history. Oh, no, I did. No, nope, I but just I mean, decided to play it. But that was what we wanted to do: is get in there and get out. And uh, yeah, even money bet. There you go. Is there a reason why you didn't play the down? If you only knew the power of the dark side. Well, I mean, it was a choppy table. It was everything. Everything was telling you that wasn't very positive. Yeah. Well, and maybe we should have thought about it, but we didn't think about it because I was still trying to play, play positive and, and trying to get that table turned around, but. Yeah, we did say it was getting cold and we should have made that move. Well, it's just, I was thinking about it for a little bit, but. It never crossed my mind. No, it always crosses my mind. It's just a matter of, it's a different way of making money. And you don't make it the same quickness. You know, hitting a pass line bet with odds, you know, when the point's 10 and you're doubling up on things, I mean, that's, that's... When you can make you some gotta, money. Yeah, you've got to do a lot of that when you're betting on the dome. But, but then again, I, like I was saying earlier, their, their repeaters were happening. So, I mean, it's not like the dome come was going to work. You underestimate the power of the dark side. Yeah. You know, well, that, yeah, they, uh, and that's actually, you know, we did say that already that the people were hitting back to back numbers yeah, a lot. So, I actually thought a come bet would have been good at some at one point, but um, you know, I'm not going to play that, but yeah. Yeah, that's probably why I didn't think don't because there were a lot of back to backs. Well, don't come. Give yourself to the dark side. I mean, I guess that we should have been thinking second point, third point on the don't pass. 
If you only knew the power of the dark side. Yeah, we should have been. We should have been switching over. We should have been. You know, first point pass line. Second point down. Yeah. And then third point double. And all you're doing there is catching up from your first. Although you should have made money on your first point. I did. And then if you don't hit, if you don't get your, the second point down, then you get a third point down. Hopefully the third point you get that seven. But then all that you're doing there is you're winning your money back from the second point dump that you lost. But it still means you won your first bet. So what you're saying is, is after the first point, I could have stopped playing. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because realistically, well, then what you want to do is you want to make you want to make sure they don't get their second point. You're playing that they don't get their second point. If they do get their second point, then you're down. And so, third point, you either catch up or you don't. Do you take one loss per person? When you start playing the don't, you have to have a loss limit per player. Yeah, you do. agree. Oh, most definitely. I mean, that's that's what gets you into trouble is when you start trying to play catch up. Well, you you can't be thinking poker when you're playing craps. You can't be thinking chipping a chair. You can't be thinking double it up because you will you will get burnt so fast. And that's what happens. We I think I think analogies all the time when I'm playing craps, and you can't be thinking about poker when you're thinking about craps. I agree with that. You gotta think about craps if you're playing craps. <laughs> well, yeah, well, if you're playing the don't. Give yourself to the dark side. Then you have to have rules, because otherwise you'll get, you'll get, just like you need rules playing positive, you still need rules playing negative. And if you're gonna play the don't. You underestimate the power of the dark side. You can't just do it haphazardly. Because then you'll just break even. Or lose. You won't win. Well, if you could do it over again, what would you do different? I, you know, I mean, I don't think I played poorly. Right. You know, I mean, I don't know that I made... I mean, if I could take it back with knowing what I know, I bet more on the points I knew I hit and less on the ones I knew I didn't hit. Yeah. You know, I mean, it still is always gambling, and that's the thing that you always have to remember, no matter... Uh, oh, is your bankroll big enough? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Size wasn't what didn't uh, slow me down. But, you know, it, we have... Sometimes the dice just don't roll. You know, sometimes the dice aren't aren't going to show you. And you know, at those and during those trends, if you can either be on the don't or be playing super small, and then when you're on the trends that you see that are going up, and we just unfortunately didn't find that trend, and instead of backing down, we try to fight through it. And well, what's funny is we were on the crapless table and left the crapless table to go to a regular table, and then we never played at the don't. You underestimate the power of the dark side. Yeah. Yeah. And we probably would have last. We probably would uh, would have played differently if we played the crapless table because we're not wasting money on the uh, ATS. Or True. Although again, we did well. There were a couple guys at the table that, I mean, that's the thing. Everybody had kind of a good feel. Everybody had a one good, you know, 10-plus roll. But then nobody could ever sustain, you know, another roll like that after. Yeah. You know, Hillbilly guy had a good roll before we got to the table. And then his next two rolls were, you know, less than seven. with a 7, an 11, and a 3.
feels like we should have been playing Dewey Down again. So it well, wasn't I tell that you many what, sevens and elevens. No, but I tell you what that would do. It would remind us to always, well, it would leave us the option to always play don't. Give yourself to the dark side. If yeah, that's we, what we want. We did that for a while. Well, and that's exactly how we played. We played positive on the first point and negative on the second point. Or skip the second point, play negative on the third point. That's probably the better way to work out. I don't know. It just depends on how much risk you want to have, how much exposure. I mean, half of this is contingent. They hit the first point. All right. happens is when, when you go head to head with somebody who ends up having a five or six roll and you switch to don't. If you only knew the power of the dark side. On the third and you're trying to catch up on the fourth and try to catch up on the fifth and all of a sudden you're down. Yeah. Uh, I think there was for a while we were, you know, taking the winnings from your bet and then putting that on the don't for the second point because then you're not then you're then you're playing with house money and you're not taking your money but you know that doesn't that's not always good yeah if I do it all over again it would definitely be playing on the down give yourself to the dark and probably just straight down. I think you have to slow play it. And there weren't any idiots at the table. There was only a couple of quick buy-ins while the dice were out, but they weren't that disruptive. Oh, we did see a uh, a waitress interfere with the shooter, and then he summoned out. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, uh, so. Shooter was next to me at the end of the table. Uh, here comes the waitress asking everybody at the table from the other end to coming down. Gets to gets to the two of us, and then the guy at the end's got the dice and he's focused on the dice. And waitress is, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Do you need a drink? He keeps his head down the whole time. Never even looks at her. Sure enough. Next roll, 6-1. Six, 7-0. Seven and nine. We both look at each other. It's like, shit. Should have turned our bets off. Didn't turn our bets off. Didn't hop the sevens. Should have turned our bets off and hopped the sevens. I know. Lessons learned. Experiences noted. Yeah. No, there were probably a couple situations we missed, but overall, I think yeah, we we've been focusing so much on trying to make the table positive that we should have just read the table for what it was instead of trying to think we can manipulate it. I mean, that's the other thing is I guess some tables are more manipulatable than others. You can't manipulate them all. them all. But that's us, us wanting to have a positive game. Yeah. Well, I guess I wasn't thinking um, of switching to the dark side because I also wasn't ready to go. <laughs> And we keep saying that. Oh, you, but yeah, you keep thinking that it's an exit strategy. So the, yeah, that that what, what yeah. you were you didn't want to leave, and so therefore you couldn't play. That's why. I did, that's why I didn't think about it. <laughs> it's just one play. Yeah, we didn't think at all about playing on the dome. You underestimate the power of the dark side. Because otherwise, we could have gotten in much earlier. Because we wouldn't have been in our positions. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's exactly what we mess 
messed up on the day. We didn't read the table at all. We came to the table trying to influence the table, make it something it wasn't. So we always talk about scouting and, and doing everything, and we did that, but then we just said, okay, this is what the table is, and we're going to make it positive by doing this, by doing our routine. And it didn't, it didn't work. But it also wasn't like as bad as it's, you know, we, we, it's been real bad where, you know, you point seven out. You didn't, at least you didn't point seven out today. Mm, no, I don't think I did actually. No, you didn't. I hit one number and then seven down. <laughs> well, it's better than point seven out. Yeah, I mean, that was, I guess, the good thing for both of us is we didn't have a short, short roll. We just didn't have long rolls. Yeah. What did we say? The longest was from? 11, 12, 11. 11 and 10, yeah. Yeah. And I think we probably need to come back on a, do one of our Tuesday, Wednesday things. Try to get here on a Wednesday morning. Like Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon. That would be cool. Yeah. I think that's still my favorite trip of all time. Yeah, the week I, weekday casino trip's pretty good. Because it can be pretty dead. The dealers are usually pretty attentive. And if you're doing well, they're having a good time. But I do think the uh, dealers were uh, attentive to us because of our tipping. Sure. I mean, I don't know. And I did see that, you know, after the two of us made tips for the dealers, the guy next to us, he made tips for the dealers too. So it did start to spread around the table. So... Again, that's where I thought we could have positive effect on the table, but nope. <laughs> that man we're talking about practice I, I was just gonna say I think we should concentrate on practicing again we're talking about practice man you know I know we've got the muscle memory but still you know we didn't really we haven't really played much this last month no but I mean again when we're when we're playing at home we're usually I don't know I'm, I'm betting a, a certain style or a certain way because I'm betting with free chips. Yeah. You know, trying out a new theory, trying out a couple of new plays. But, yeah. Well, it's been a while since we've also bet with a couple of bankrolls. You know, playing two different, you know, ways. Right. Remember we, you know, it's been a while since we'd play a positive and a negative bankroll. You know, see which one would, would win. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of work that we probably need to do. Well, and what? That's, is that the uh, punishment we have? I think so. You know, you got to do, we got to do laps and push-ups and all that kind of stuff. I would say so, yes. You know, do we, uh... tracker back out and start looking at dice sets and start start well, 
sharpening up the tools in the toolbox. Yeah, I think mine are pretty dull. Well, you had mentioned you felt a little rusty. Yeah. Not that, you know, I don't see any rust. It's all on the insides. Ah. Uh, well, then I guess that's it. Well, well uh, only to return. Well, sure, no, but I mean, I guess that's that's the homework that we're gonna end up doing. Is uh, you know putting in some time at the table before we go to the table. So, I are. But uh, yeah, I guess that's that'll be the end of this one. Uh, not every trip's a good trip. Coming up on our next episode, we talk about our most recent casino trip. The Red Eye Gamblers, thank you for your time and hope you got a little something out of this week's podcast. Here's to rolling sevens on the come out and may your sixes and eights always be hard. Cheers. Cheers.